Welcome everybody, um, I'm Alexander Linz, Head of Content of WatchAdvisor.com and today I am in a very particular situation. I am in Wetzlar at uh, the headquarters of Leica, Leica cameras, Leica optics. We are filmed by a Sony camera, beside of, totally me, okay. <laughs> <laughs> beside of me is Dr. Andreas Kaufmann who is the owner of Leica and we are not going to talk about cameras of course but about watches because today I will present you with Dr. Kaufmann the latest adventure of uh, Leica uh, being uh, a future watchmaker or already not, not only a future watchmaker, you are already a watchmaker but jumping into the really, in really watchmaking compared to what we see on the left side these were the, the further adventures of Leica Dr. Kaufmann, mm. how did it... Uh, what were the... the what brought you or what inspired you to become a watchmaker? Well, I, definitely I'm not a watchmaker. No, I could no, not, no, not handle you, it. But, uh, I could not handle it. Um, I always admire how they could work, you know, with this yeah. element in the eye. And then they do things where I think, oh my God, I would shake, I would kill everything. No. Um, so, um, Leica always had this intention to do something related to mechanics uh, because they are specialists in doing fine precision mechanics and when you look into the inside for instance the rangefinder of the M camera the tiny little elements you see in there the little wheels etc etc they are pretty related to a watch movement so the idea was always there um, sometimes they try to do certain things here we have a, a <laughs> film those uh, yeah. right away afterwards. So, the first attempt of probably, like a This probably was a giveaway with a camera. <laughs> <laughs> we have to show it to the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first attempt uh, of, of Leica. Yeah. There were the, the one or two others, but I couldn't find them until yet. So this was definitely done together with a company in Pforzheim based on a, a Vajou. Design, well, yeah. <laughs> this was an attempt with a very small uh, Geneva uh, uh, manufacturer, uh, Valbray. The idea was an interesting idea to do something like the aperture on a uh, on a camera on a lens, yeah. But the um, let's say the design was, um, yeah. yeah. We could this. It's, uh, let, let me call it interesting. Interesting, yeah. yeah. I will I'll try to try. Yeah, you see, you can close here. Uh, you can close and open like on a lens yeah. of a camera. But yeah. when you look into into the movement, yeah. you might find some elements uh, which are used usually. Um, this, 775. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this, 775. This is a unique piece. It was done together with Leinfelder and um, Damasco Regensburg. Mm -hmm. But it was a test case, only 10 pieces. And I assume a silicon hairspring. Yep. Because they are. Yeah. They were one, yeah, silicon hairspring, yeah. Only 10 done, but uh, design wise. And, <laughs> this uh, anyway, it was a test case. So, and then we decided, oh, we have to go on our own. And um, I was. This is definitely before. It was before until, you. until 2013. Okay. Yeah. And then I decided we should do something really. And we came uh, a bit by accident. Uh, we negotiated with one of the manufacturers, which still exists in the uh, Black Forest, a company called Hanhardt. It's known for the stopwatches. Yeah. And they make great stopwatches, but what people don't know, they also have quite a few designs for older movements still in their yeah, drawers. Yeah. And they have quite skilled people, so I like what I saw there. But, but the entire manufacturer is a bit old. Skilled people, sometimes, you know, when you have really skilled watchmakers, yeah. um, then it doesn't matter so much. I always, when I, when I go there, I always say it's like a museum, a little bit. Yeah, but still, they, they still can turn us stopwatches, and I yeah. like them. I, yeah. you, you, I have them for classic car racing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the standard. Anyway, um, we didn't come uh, on terms with, with the owner, and in, in the process, we came together with other people. The former, um, uh, it was former uh, sales director, managing director for Mar Piguet in Germany, and one, he was retired at that moment, one of the mechanical designers from Lange. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And together with them, we develop this, the basic ideas, um, the basic um, function for uh, the zero reset. And then during the process, we looked for someone who could help us and also get this into productionizing. So we came together with, with Lehmann, great guy, great manufacturer. In Germany. In Germany, yeah. also in the Black Forest. And this was the setup and together with our designer, former Leica designer, Achim Heine, professor in Berlin, we developed this in a process which did take three and a half years. So now we're here, the first prototype production is sort of running, you know, when you're in the prototype production, you always have tiny little things Adjustments to, to adjust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what we are uh, presenting today. We use, by the way, um, um, a, a different entity here. It's called Ernst Leitz Werkstätten. Into the um, and Ernst Leitz Werkstätten is producing for Leica, we, we did choose the, um, the, uh, uh, the brand Leica Wetzlar. So this is Leica Wetzlar. Um, this is the entity with whom we uh, develop this, with whom we do the final assembling in, in future uh, downstairs, the so-called mariage. Mm -hmm. um, and um, here we are. So you have two versions? versions L1, for the L2. Um, um, non, basic, basic non winding, you have to wind them, it's not uh, automatic. Hand wound yeah, movement. Yeah. Anyhow, we'll film yeah. them and uh, show you later, but this is a first attempt for you. Um, there is one speciality you already mentioned in the zero reset. Yeah. And there's a, um, um, in French you say, a clin d'oeil or yeah. a hint. When you press the button and you, you activate the zero reset, yeah. there's a red dot appearing. Tiny little red dot. Be yeah. Because you worked long on the, uh, on the question, I should there be a red dot on a watch? I don't. But I'm not sure a big if red dot on a watch always creates some sort of, you know, um, distraction. So, so we decided it should be only there for a short moment. Yeah. So zero reset yeah. function is very useful. You press the crown and what happens is that the second hand will automatically go back to zero. And if you need to set the watch, it's easy because you just need to wait for the time signal and you yeah. press. And that means also you can check then in one day or two days, um, is it exact? Has it to be adjusted because you know mechanical movements? You always have to do it. Yeah, it's easy to to yeah. readjust the watch. Yeah, and then there is one um, uh, one version of the two that has an inner turning basal yeah. that enables you to uh, let's say uh, use it as a kind of a traveling watch to read time from a, tech, a second zone time. I always like this function because when you, uh, for instance, I travel quite uh, every month. I have to travel to Portugal. So mm -hmm. that's Greenwich Mean Time. It's just one hour. You just do the, yeah, you you do the whole watch. You just change this a bit because if you're there for one day, that's sufficient. I, I would call this um, a traveler's watch. Yeah. We have actually an L3 in the pipeline. Um, this will also have then um, an alarm clock function. Mechanical. A mechanical. Very nice. Yes. I love it. I love it too. And um, we'll take it a bit. This is still more complicated than everything we do here. And if you have this, you know, together with an alarm uh, function, you basically have everything a traveler needs. Yeah, <laughs> but I love it. Yeah. I, I, I've been really uh, push. I've been really, uh, uh, let's say, motivating people to say, okay, make more alarms. There are no more mechanical alarms on the market. Well, there are two. One is the the cricket yeah, with the Tommen. Yeah, of course. Also, and, and the, the yeah, of course. It's Vulcan. Mm -hmm. Vulcan, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, 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 well, as the French say. Then they have Blanc Pain Brogue do have yeah. a movement where they use. Yeah. But I think this is really something very useful. I very much like it. That will be L3, but it takes a bit. So, yeah, uh, mechanically, Another, it's. Um, but you're already working on this? Yes, sure. Okay, then it yeah. will, the bit will be shorter. Um, no longer three years. <laughs> no, no, not three years. <laughs> and, but, but the goal is to have um, a sound which is not like the cricket. Yeah, because uh, this is mechanical, yeah. it should be melodious. So let's see. Is it great? <laughs> great. I'm really, I like the design. Congratulations. A very pure design. Um, also, some hints of uh, camera optics by doming. It's dome here, the, yeah. the glass is domed. So, yeah. really nice. Made in Germany. Yes. Um, because basically, all 
all this stuff is produced in Germany apart from the glass and in glass for, uh, for the sapphire glass there are only yeah, a few uh, yeah, producers yeah. in Switzerland full stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, production size, can you estimate? Uh, Small scale production. The first year, this year, we will only have a few hundreds. Okay. Yeah. Sold through your own networks and sold, retailers? Sold through a Leica network where there are roughly 10 stores which are already in the pre-training for that and maybe two eventually three jewelers in the German-speaking countries mm -hmm. who might um, be trained for that and then uh, have it in their portfolio. Okay. And but, you know, small scale production. Price-wise? Um, may, yeah, may, 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 <laughs> may I, may I, may I Leica is always about margin. Yeah? So we need to have a nice margin because here it's, we, we never did this before. On the other hand, it's a totally unique movement, which means the first L1 will probably start somewhere at 9,500, 9,800. And the others, there will be a gold version. Um, um, the, uh, for the L2, and there will be a few with a red color. Okay. Red and black are the two colors. The black will be changed a bit. It will be a bluish black. Okay. But not bluish now, uh, as they do it, because at the moment in some watches this is a sort of you know color of the day. Yes. Um, the black has to have a little tiny blue element that it's more intense. I understand. So that's how we see it. Dr. Kaufmann, thank you very much. Uh, congratulations to your little adventure. Well, a big adventure in, in, in terms of investment, I think it's a big adventure. It is. But in terms of uh, compared with mm -hmm. what you have been able to do with cameras, it's a, it's a little adventure. Um, I wish you all the best for those watches, and I'm very much looking forward for the alarm watch. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very thank much. You. Thanks, guys, for watching. If you like, <laughs> if you like the video, don't forget to like our videos on YouTube and see you very soon. And in case if you want to buy it, book a trip to Wetzlar. Yeah, Wetzlar. Uh, <laughs> we are about uh, one yeah. hour north of uh, one hour north of, uh, of, Frankfurt. of Frankfurt, and uh, we are in the new established Leica uh, world here. And there is a nice boutique, so you can also buy cameras and watches, of course. <laughs> and I have a coffee actually at the Lights Cafe. Yeah, good coffee. <laughs> okay. Bye, bye, guys. Bye.